Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today on my first tutorial video. This will help you get set up in your development environment and get all the things that you need going so you can start coding and being productive. Um, when I first got started, it was really hard for me to get everything set up. I didn't understand anything. So hopefully with this guide and compiling everything that you need to get started will help you. Um, and if you have any questions, comment or let me know. I'm attaching a Medium blog post for, with this for easiness of accessing the web pages and um, so you can just copy paste things into your console. So hopefully this helps you. Um, yeah, let's get started. I just wanted to share a little bit about me. I I am originally from Chile and that's why I have an accent. I moved to the US when I was 15. I went to college at Virginia Tech for chemical engineering. I graduated and then I took a process engineering job for four years then decided that I wanted to be a software engineer so I quit my job and half got laid off slash quit. And then I decided to learn on my own, so I took five months off and learned Ruby on Rails. And then I applied for a job and got it. Uh, it's been a year since that happened. So that's why I want to make it easier for other people to get set up without having to go to a boot camp. I'm also super excited about Elixir. There's not a lot of learning resources out there, so I want to be one of those resources because it's an awesome language. I still love Ruby and I love all the other languages, but Elixir is awesome. So. We will have already thought of some tutorials to do with that. I've already made some projects, so I'm super excited about everything. So the first thing we're going to do is install iTerm, uh, which is a terminal with more features at the terminal that comes in your Mac. Um, it will give you access to the command line and you can then execute files in your computer, create directories, edit text, start servers, and others. Um, It'll make more sense why it's nicer as you get deeper into development, but here I am going to the website and downloading it. Thing. I'm opening up the zip file, double click on iTerm, it will prompt you, Just click on open, move to applications folder, and I chose to check automatically for updates. You can too or you can not um, and there you go now you have your new um, terminal all set up and ready to go so next up we're gonna do the Xcode command line tools this is not the same as, as Xcode you do not have installed all of it um, to get the command line tools we're just gonna install the package so first we're gonna check if we already have that installed um, you can read through the docs if you want. Uh, they won't make a lot of sense. They didn't make sense to me. They still kind of don't make sense. But here's the command to check if you have it. Um, if you don't have it, you will get an error unable to get Active Developer Directory. So we are going to copy um, the GCC command down here and we are going to paste it into our console just making sure that that's the only thing that we have to do so copy paste and it'll prompt you so click install here's where you could get xcode if you're planning on doing an iphone development or swift um so it installs it takes a lot longer than that i just fast forward the video now I'm gonna check if I have it and I should you should get a directory and that's how you know you have Xcode developer tools properly installed. You can also check for the version. Um, you'll be able to update your Xcode developer tools by just going into your app store and click an update like you update any other app. Next up we are going to install Homebrew. Homebrew is super easy to use. I love it. I wish I discovered it a long time ago. You can install everything using it and it installs it in your whole machine. It keeps it in a directory for you. It's amazing. So we're going to copy this line and we're going to paste it into our console. You can read here all the 
awesome things about homebrew. You can also make your own packages if you ever get that ambitious, but obviously right now uh, you probably don't even know what that means. So we're just gonna paste that into our console. I'm opening up a new window and I am installing homebrew. Uh, click enter and type in your password if it prompts you and you should be done obviously it'll take you a little bit longer I'm fast forwarding through this and you can click uh, type in brew help and we are also gonna do cask which is to install even more awesome things like I installed Spotify using this and we're gonna use it for our next few programs that we have to install so just copy paste that line uh, paste it into your computer, your console, wait for it to install, and you're good! We are going to immediately use what we installed and we're going to use Brewcast to install Atom. Atom is our text editor. Um, you can also install Sublime if you would like and there's other ones. But Atom is open source, it's free, and it has all the things that you will need. So uh, let's paste this, copy it into our console, press enter, and type in your password, and ta-da, you got Adam installed. Now you have a beautiful code editor for all the coding you're going to be doing in the future. It's beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to install Node.js for those super interested in doing Front end development, you'll need it for all the JavaScript things. It is a server framework. Um, you will, I think even Ruby on Rails requires it, and I installed it when I was uh, making a Phoenix app. So let's just go ahead and copy, do brew install node. And there you have it. Um, you can check uh, node version to see if it installed properly. Um, and it will also install the node package manager uh, which you will be using pretty often if you're doing front-end development okay so now we're going to be installing Postgres um, the first time I had to install this for Ruby and Rails I had a really hard time um, don't know what I did I have no clue how I installed it but it was a pain um, so we're gonna do it with brew thank you brew again um, you could use other databases too, but I think most of the time this is the most used one. So we're going to follow the instructions in this post. You could do it however you want. You'll find several different things that you can do. I tried them all while I was making this tutorial and then I decided to just use Brew for this. So Brew services, which is something new to me. Um, we're going to go on our console and type Brew install PostgreSQL. I believe it was. I had to check before I typed in the whole command. Click enter. Might take a while, but you will have it. Got Postgres now, so you're good to go. Uh, it's a relational database management system. So you will need it if you're using SQL, if you're using Mongo, or a NoSQL database, then this is not for you. Here's where I was trying to do the, the uh, things that were suggested about the pose, but then I decided to just do brew services instead um, that I saw in a previous post. It just seemed easier to use. So tap homebrew services and then we can just brew service start postgres we can restart it we can stop it by just typing that command instead of making links to commands and other things thank you guys so much for joining me for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and it helped you out um, i will be putting out more material so stay tuned um, access the medium blog post if you need it should be all written down if you couldn't keep up with the video or whatever. So yay. Thank you. And bye.